How's it going, everybody? Welcome to Just Nobody's Podcast. I'm your host, Ryan. And I'm your host, Daniel. Today, we're doing a podcast. Woo. If you're new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button and also hit the like button. The one with the thumbs up, and when you hit it, it'll make fireworks on the screen. It actually hits when you like click it. There's like a little firework emoji going on, right? And I, I heard all your wishes come true when you see the fireworks. Really? Head. Yeah, well, think about it, right? It omits like the idea of like sparks, mm. fire, yeah. life. <laughs> Like, that's so why we have fireworks. Press in it if you want your dreams to come. Wishes. 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 Well, think about it, right? Just about anything, right? If you have fireworks in your life, right? That means you have some excitement, some fun. Yeah. So why not press it, experience it visually, right? <laughs> See the fireworks, and internally, you'll be like, let's go. Yeah. Hit the like button. I like that. <laughs> Also, comment what you want us to talk about next week. As you're going to see throughout this week, we took your guys' suggestions from last week's podcast, and we're going to talk about it this week. Did you know how George Washington, the president, was actually killed and no one knew about it? Wait, he was killed? Yeah, so have you heard of, like, what bloodletting is? No. So one day, George Washington, like, was having, like, a really bad migraine. He was, like, freaking out, like, oh, my gosh, my head hurts so bad. And, like, we've all had migraines, right? We were, like, but it, like, lasts a couple hours, but then it goes away. But for George Washington, he was, like, no, screw this. I'm going to go to the doctor. Goes to the doctor, like, doctor, I'm dying. My head hurts so bad. So the doctor is like well, we have one solution bloodletting so is bloodletting bad yeah so bloodletting <laughs> is basically what they do is like the doctor's like all right let me get my knife out right start stabbing him like in random places to puncture his veins hoping that it would release the pressure of the blood so like blood starts coming out right and in their head they're like oh if we do this it'll like release the pressure so the migraine will go away so they did this hoping that it would make george washington relax and have his headache like disappear but the action of bloodletting is what ended up killing George Washington. So he literally was killed by the doctor. Who the heck thought of this? That doesn't even make sense. It's crazy if you think about it, if they created this thing called bloodletting, because you know they did it before George Washington. And I'm sure they killed people before George Washington. Yeah, you know if the president's doing it, other people had to do it too. Right, but I don't see how you can do it successfully and they probably didn't even think twice about it they're like okay let's just do it okay so i thought we would talk about some of the strangest jobs in america so do you know what the strangest jobs are in america i feel like this is gonna be really messed up do you know what a deodorant tester is do they just try deodorants kind of so what they do is they like have someone put on deodorant right underneath the armpits and like some other places and then they have this person the deodorant tester go really close to their armpit smell the armpit and this job actually makes like really good money like the guy makes two million dollars a year so this guy named barry jewett actually is the one making two million dollars and he's the deodorant tester this guy makes two million dollars for sniffing armpits yeah so he has people come into his office it's like a doctor's office and he has them apply the deodorant on and then he starts sniffing them like he'll sniff their armpits their arms their feet their breath he'll even smell their used underwear wait why would he need to smell their underwear i don't know i thought that was kind of weird too but like he'll smell the person's you know area and if he has like zero smell then he'll rank it a zero but if there's like a lot of like pungent smells and like crazy like things off the charts he rates it a 10 so if it smells a little fishy he'll give it a 10 <laughs> yeah so like over time this is what they determine like what's a good deodorant so like he determines what gets like sold in the store okay i would take two million dollars to smell some armpits too so there's also a job called a dog food tester do you know what a dog food tester is no what the heck is that so lucy poston's job is actually exactly what it sounds like she's a dog food tester so lucy eats the dog food and lets people know her thoughts on it what yeah i mean think about it dogs can't communicate with like the workers like how the food tastes so they need someone to taste the food to confirm the taste and that's why like on dog food you see it says like chicken flavored or beef flavored like how do they know that they have to have someone taste it to confirm that it's actually that taste and that's lucy's job so lucy's job is to confirm if it tastes like what they're advertising and if it tastes good okay how much is she making doing this so like for people that are like dog cat like rabbit food testers they make anywhere okay get this from thirty four thousand to one hundred and seventeen thousand dollars a year just to eat the food and like write some reports about what they saw in the food or like improvements that need to be made and then sometimes like lucy's job will be like I think dogs need more like apricots in their life. So I'm going to figure like a recipe for like dog food with apricots. Like she's trying, <laughs> she's trying to come up with new ways to make dog food. I guess it makes sense because someone has to try it to make sure it's right. But I just didn't think it would be humans. I know for the longest time, I honestly thought it was always like they have a, like a control room and they have like these doors open up and dogs come out. There's a bowl of food and the dogs like go up, you know, they eat it. They're <laughs> like, okay, the dog's still alive. So it's good food. Like I never thought they would have humans test out the food. I mean, if the dog continues to eat it, you would think they like it, yeah right so you wouldn't think a human would have to eat it apparently they need human <laughs> test trials i guess okay so moving on from crazy jobs we're gonna talk about some crazy people isn't it amazing 
how there are crazy people. Yeah. Isn't it amazing? Yeah, it's great. It's just like when you hit the thumbs up button. Fireworks. Fireworks. Amazing. Excitement. Crazy. Boom. Boom. So do you know the woman that married and had a child with a rag doll? <laughs> what the heck? I know it sounds super crazy, but just listen. Well, yeah, I have no other choice but to listen. <laughs> okay, so there was this 37-year-old lady, right? And she always complained to her mom. She's like, mom, I'm single. I never have a dance partner. Like, I don't know what to do. So the mom decided to make her a life-size rag doll, right? And this lady like fell in love with it. She even gave it a name and she named it Marcella. And she literally did like everything with this doll. She would like take it on trips, take it on dates. It was like nonstop with this doll. I guess she did everything with the doll. She has a kid with the doll. <laughs> yeah. So she ended up marrying this doll and they had a 250 person wedding with her and the doll. Was the audience like filled with like a bunch of action figures? No, her real friends actually showed up for this. But after the wedding, she announced she was pregnant with Marcello and they were expecting a child. And she said the delivery of the baby took only 35 minutes and it was super painless how is this working is it like a real baby or is she like adopting or what is it okay the baby is actually just a small rag doll and she actually had a real life doctor and nurse help with the delivery of the baby the woman says that marcelo the rag doll is actually a really good father and all the women envy him but he could be lazy at some time i would have never thought that i mean the rag doll not doing anything lazy wow how tough interesting story i just don't understand it but do you think she sees the rag doll and imagines like the head moving and like the mouth moving and stuff or do you think she sees it like how we all do like just a, I don't a stuffed know. animal honestly i hope that she sees it like a real person yeah like there's like emotion marcelo's talking to her like i love you and he, she's like i love you too good for uh the girl and marcelo and the child just right? one happy family okay so moving on remember in like elementary school when like everyone would go to the computer lab but everybody would just go on google earth yeah i do remember that i don't know why it was like the coolest thing at the time right we'd all go on google earth yeah. And you like search your address and you'd be like, oh my gosh, my car is parked outside. <laughs> yeah. So have you heard of the mystery that was actually solved by Google Earth? No. Okay. So this happened in Florida and this guy was just looking on Google Earth, like in his neighborhood and he looked at his local pond. But when he zoomed in on his local pond, he found something in there that didn't look right. So he called the police to go check it out. Dude, the quality on Google Earth is not even that good. Like, what do you see? I know, but when the police actually went to the pond, they actually saw that it was a car that sunk into the pond. So they took it out and they had to search it. And they actually found human bones inside. They found the bones in the car? I wonder how long it was sitting there for. Yeah, so they examined and tested the bones. And they found that it actually belonged to a guy named William Moult, who was a 40-year-old who went missing in 1997. And literally nobody knew what happened to him when he went missing but he was now found 22 years later in 2019 what's freaky to me is how it went 22 years right just a car sitting in a pond and no one drove by the pond like hey look there's a car in there like right no one noticed that yeah how does no one notice it but then you go on google earth and you can just see it just sitting there yeah i mean i'm sure you see like tire tracks too like leading up to the pond yeah and if you look at the google earth image yeah you could tell something's in there like it doesn't look like just a normal like pond good job google earth i'm glad <laughs> You know, you're able to get the details right to <laughs> to find the car in the pond. I just remember going to the computer lab, right? It's always Google Earth or Club Penguin or Chess or Minesweeper. Yeah. Like, those were, like, the four things, right? When you're, like, the teacher walks by, oh, closes all the tabs. It's funny how back then that was so entertaining to do. Like, yeah. Just to grab the globe with the mouse and, like, spin it. Okay, so speaking of school, I saw this thing on homework. So there's actually proof on why homework shouldn't exist. I can already tell that teachers are going to hate us and students are going to love us. Okay, so I know for a fact every student hates homework, but every teacher continues to give it to us. But Roberto Nevelis, who was the actual creator of homework. He created the concept of homework? Yeah. Okay, he didn't intend it for it to be the way it is today. He actually created it as a punishment for kids that are misbehaving. It wasn't to improve grades. It was actually to punish kids. Well, I never did homework and I still passed. <laughs> so if you compare the schools in the U.S. to the schools in Finland, the high school graduation rate in the U.S. is actually 75%. And the graduation rate in Finland is actually 93% to 99%. And they give like no homework to the students. And all the students in Finland only go to school five hours per day when all the kids in the U.S. go for seven hours a day. And schools in Finland give kids over an hour of break every day. And U.S. schools only give them like a little over 30 minutes. We have to do this here. Like, this is ridiculous. I mean, when you really think about it, their schools have a higher graduation rate. Everything's like better there. Why don't we just do that here? Yeah, and especially if you look at like mental health and everything that goes down with like homework and everything, there's a lot of detriments to having homework. It puts a lot of stress on kids. Yeah. And we don't really know if it's actually helping kids retain the information. Because like for me, say if I did homework, yeah, I do it, I forget it, and then once the test is over, off the like pointless use information, like you just forget about it. Right. Who cares? And I saw someone say this. They said, if school is not a place for sleep, then your home should not be a place for work. Exactly. Very right? good. Right? Very good.
Hit the like button for that one if you agree. <laughs> Hit the fireworks for that one. Oh my gosh, that's good. That should be on a shirt. Yeah, screw homework, but oh my gosh. I had a lot of, like, a lot of my friends were just like, we're just like those guys that would just listen to music in class. Like, we didn't do anything. I know there's one teacher at our school, like elementary school, that actually taught kids how to listen to music while they do their homework to make them do better. What? Yeah, I remember this in third grade. There was a class across the way. I don't want to say the guy's name, but he actually taught his kids how to listen to music uh -huh. to utilize it as a way to, like, focus and, like, do better at their work. What the heck? Speaking of music, though, you know Kendrick Lamar. Yeah. Do you know the Kendrick Lamar theory? No. Did you see the video of Kendrick Lamar, like, performing on stage, and then, like, all of a sudden, he just vanished? Wait, what do you mean by vanished? Like, he just disappeared? I get their stage tricks and everything, right? But this is not it. So, like, watch this clip. So, like, in this video, right, you see him holding a puppet, right? And he's, like, rapping with it. But then, all of a sudden, you're going to see him vanish. You see him Wait, vanish? what? He, he just disappeared. Right. So, there was, like, no light tricks. There was no camera tricks, right? You can literally see the audience behind where he was, right? And he just disappears. He literally just disappeared. So, there's a theory that he's actually using a 360-degree hologram. And if this is true, he doesn't even have to be performing every night. He could just be using his hologram. This hologram is so good, it looks like he's actually there. And, like, nobody in the audience noticed. And just yesterday, they actually used this technology at the Cubs game for this guy named Harry Carey, who was an announcer that died 25 years ago. But they brought him back, and it looked so real. He literally sang Take me out to the ball game and it was a 360 degree hologram right so you could see the front side of him the side of him and the back of him and it looked like a real person and the last time we saw hologram technology was like in 2014 with michael jackson so like it's been eight years so the technology has gotten a lot better probably right so it makes sense why it's so realistic okay if that was a hologram that's a really good hologram if you can't tell when it's a hologram or a person yeah who knows what they could do with that but who actually knows like what artists are using this now and not actually playing their shows yeah because it's kind of like when you see like the jabberwockies perform or like marshmallow yeah right they wear a mask so you really don't know if it's them but could you imagine now artists could totally use this and not actually be at the shows and just like you know perform like one time 100%. and then show their hologram at the concerts yeah it's just crazy too like how it's been like really on the down low right no one talks about this technology you don't see like everyone using it it's kind of like a you know what kendrick probably did that on purpose to like expose it you oh, know really? what i mean like expose like there's this thing like, yeah technology available yeah oh interesting and there's no trap doors there's got it's it's definitely a hologram i think because they've been asked to like his team like how do you guys do it and they refuse to explain how they did it are you serious yeah they want to keep it a secret yeah but speaking about crazy news cobra kai just came out with some crazy news i know they dropped a lot of photos huh yeah do you remember the theory about mike barnes yeah turns out that theory was right and he's coming back we had a feeling that he was going to come back right it just seemed like it was still not quite going to happen it's confirmed now they just go out and just drop that huh yeah he's he's coming so i guess the real question is is he going to be Corey's dad because that's the theory i said right right i think it's definitely possible so what do you think they're going to use mike barnes story you think he, okay do you think he's going to be with larusso or do you think he's going to be with terry silver it's got to be terry silver because it's got to be that's got to be the person that Terry Silver Silver called. Yeah, you're right. I forgot about the phone call. Yeah. I was also going to say that maybe, though, the reason why Mike Barnes is no longer with Terry Silver is because they had a falling out. Mm. Which could be true. And maybe Terry Silver's calling one of Mike Barnes' friends because Mike Barnes has a couple friends, right? Right. And yes. then Mike Barnes has to come out of the shadows and be like, you know what? Screw this. I'm here to help Daniel LaRusso That's and fight true. his buddies. That's true. Oh. Maybe. Fireworks. <laughs> Thumbs up. Fireworks. <laughs> bam, bam, bam. That that would be an interesting twist, though. And you know, like, in Cobra Kai, I really wonder what they're going to do with, like, the whole, like, love triangle thing. There's so many, like, crazy different relationships going on. I remember the show, but I also, like, forgot a lot about it. Like, I can't remember who's, who's with who anymore. But speaking of relationships, there's a crazy theory that you can actually tell what couples are happy together and what couples are not happy together based on their photos. You're going to end some couples today, huh? Huh. Nobody's safe. Maybe, but we all know that one couple that is always posting pictures together and they look super happy. But there's actually a theory that the more you post your relationship online, the unhappier you are in your relationship. So based on like how many times they post with each other, you can tell like if the relationship's good or bad. Yeah. So there was a study of like thousands of couples and they were asked how happy they are in their relationship and how often they post their relationship online. And they found the people that don't post their relationship online are actually more happier than the people that are constantly posting their relationship. And they say couples that are constantly posting photos together actually have a lot of trust issues and they need more excitement in their relationship. So that's why they keep posting. And for the couples that don't post, they're more happy in their relationship because they're trying to live in the moment instead of capture the moment to try to show it off i mean it makes a lot of sense we live in a world where it's all about like look at what i'm doing right yeah. which is fine but it's like what what is your like reasons behind it right i get it if it's your job like okay i need to do this because like, if a brand reaches out to you like hey we need you to show this product we need you to work on this you know event 
Like, I get it. You're, you're, you have to. Yeah. Right. But I heard too, you will have like the most happiness Mm -hmm. when you live in silence in terms of you want to really be careful, like who you share good things with, right? right? You don't want to share good things with bad people because they'll find a way to ruin it. Exactly. So sometimes it's better just to live in peace and not really like show off what you're doing, but instead just hold it within you and have content with the people around you because like the moment you like let everybody know about it is when you allow that like the jealousy the envy like the people that want you to fail like to see it so sometimes it's better just to keep things inside and keep it with your small group of people right it's funny you say that because after i saw this theory i went on tom holland and zendaya's instagram they rarely post together yeah. right and they're rarely like public about their relationship right? right they're seen like hanging out together but they're never openly talking about their relationship or anything like that yeah they keep it really very secretive. So as we know, there's a lot of Marvel news going around. A lot of projects been announced. So there's a crazy theory about Ant-Man. It's been too long since the last Ant-Man movie. So there's a lot of theories going around, right? Matt Pat Film Theory did a crazy theory about how Ant-Man's going to die. And it looks like this could all happen. I really don't think he's going to die. Okay, well, we know that the main villain of Quantumania is going to be Kane the Conqueror, right? And like Kane the Conqueror is supposed to be like the biggest villain of the MCU. He's supposed to make Thanos look like an ant. But in order for us to truly believe that Kang is the most powerful villain, he's gonna have to prove himself to the audience, right? Like, at this point, we don't really know. As we saw how Thanos kills Loki, kills the Asgardian people, thus half the universe away, all in one movie, showing how powerful he is. Obviously, Thanos really showed his power, right? And Kang has not yet showed really his full potential yet. Yeah, we really only saw a little bit in Loki. So this is where the theory comes in. There's a theory that Kang will actually kill Ant-Man to prove to the audience that he's going to be like the ultimate villain. I mean, think about it, right? The world loves Paul Rudd as Ant-Man. Ant-Man is like one of the most loved characters. And if he dies, it'll really shock the audience. I just think they're killing off way too many big names. Like they, they're losing the opportunity to show like comic stories. Yeah, but if you look at the evidence, right? The crew of the Ant-Man movie was given a shirt. And on the shirt was a mask of Ant-Man with a broken like face shield. And then on the reflection, you see Kane the Conqueror basically about to beat up Ant-Man. And in the comics, Ant-Man's death is very important because his death is what forms the Young Avengers because his daughter Cassie becomes stature and to avenge her father's death she forms the Young Avengers and we know that the Young Avengers have already been set up throughout the new MCU movies and sadly this is Ant-Man's third movie right and we know in the MCU that means it's probably coming to an end okay I honestly feel that this could all just be a misdirect and Hank Pym and Janet Van Dyne are gonna die we see Iron Man gets three movies Captain America gets three movies Guardians of the Galaxy is gonna get three yeah. so like it seems like your third movie is oh, your end oh yeah that is true I mean yeah it is the end of the Guardians right I mean James Gunn even said right this is it yeah them. Got Lang, you may be out of here, buddy. I'm sorry. So moving on, as we know, Black Panther Wakanda Forever is there's a lot of like mystery behind it. And we're all trying to theorize like, okay, who's the Black Panther? Who's the main character? What's gonna happen? Is Doctor Doom showing up? Like, you know, I mean there's a lot of like questions on what's gonna happen. There's also a crazy Black Panther theory how Killmonger will return. I do know there's a chunk of people that want Killmonger back. So as we know at the end of Black Panther 1, right, we see how Killmonger tells T'Challa, like, I don't want to be saved. I I don't want to be held in bondage. Like, bury me in the ocean with my ancestors. But what if I told you that T'Challa honored Killmonger and buried him in the ocean, right? Let him fall into the ocean. But keep in mind, Killmonger still has the heart-shaped herb in him, right? It gives him the powers of the Black Panther and allows him to have accelerated healing. And it doesn't take much time for him to be healed as long as he gets the proper care. Well, he would still need help. I don't think drowning is going to allow him to heal. So I saw a video by Screen Crush, and there's a theory that Killmonger will actually be brought back to life from Namor. Okay, that could actually make sense. As you know, Namor is going to be in the new movie, and he's the Prince of Atlantis, which is in the ocean. And in the trailer, it looks like Namor's at odds with Wakanda, and he's trying to find any advantage over them. So what if he found Killmonger in the ocean, and he was able to revive him and heal him? I mean, Namor would have the technology to help Killmonger and bring him back. So maybe Killmonger will start off as a bad guy helping Namor, but what happens if he switches to Wakanda in the end? I mean, if T'Challa did listen to Killmonger and put him in the ocean, it does set up Namor to save him. Right, and it just so happens that the next movie movie involves Namor with the ocean and we know that Black Panther 1 involves Killmonger probably going in the ocean okay also we know that Michael B. Jordan I think is confirmed for the movie they haven't said what his role is going to be uh-huh. but he's confirmed to be in it it's a perfect setup when you think about it yeah and plus he's a great actor yeah right? he's a great actor he would be able to carry the franchise still right right not replace T'Challa but obviously he could be the new Black Panther yeah okay so staying on the topic of like Marvel and Disney do you know the theory on why Eeyore is depressed all the time? No. Okay, so as we know, every Pixar movie is connected, but also every Disney movie is connected. And we know Eeyore is a super depressed donkey, 
but there's actually a theory that explains why he's always depressed. Is it bad for like the longest time? I never knew that Eeyore was a donkey. I thought he was like a fat horse. Yeah, he's a donkey. But if you actually go back to the movie Pinocchio, we see Pleasure Island where all these little kids get turned into donkeys because they're misbehaving. So there's a theory that Eeyore was one of those kids that turned into a donkey because he was bad, but he escaped. And that's actually why Eeyore's tail never stays on. They always have to pin it on and it's constantly falling off because someone pulled it off when he was trying to escape. And the reason he's so depressed is because he remembers what life was like as a human and he realizes that he'll never have that normal life again. Gosh, I didn't think Eeyore's story could get much darker than it already is, but that's sad. It kind of explains though, right? He is always depressed all the time. I mean, even the whole thing about the tail, right? His tail never stays on. Like, yeah. it's almost like someone pulled it off. That's so sad. But you know what's really sad? The fact that every day he has to have some sharp object in his butt. <laughs> like, that must hurt. <laughs> you, but not, not in his butthole. <laughs> Just above it. <laughs> just just right above it. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so moving on, I have this crazy story that's going to like, I don't know, it really disturbed me, and I feel like you like disturbing things, so I was going to tell you. Do you know about the photo worker who would stalk his customers? No. So this guy named Seymour Parrish worked at a photo development center, and basically he would work there, he would develop the photos, and that was his like passion. And one day his favorite customer comes in, and her name is Nina Yorkin. And basically she's trying to develop some photos, right? So she gets out a new slip for her. And before she could even say her address, he starts filling it in as if he memorized it. That's a little weird. So Seymour grabs her camera, right? And he starts looking through it and he realizes that there's one photo left for her film reel. So he takes a selfie with it. And the store's about to close, but he really likes Nina. So he's like, I'll make an exception. I'll get it done for you really quick. So he develops her photo. So some time passes, right? Seymour finishes up the photos and Nina comes back with her son, Jake. So Seymour gives them the photos. And also for Jake's birthday, he gives him like a disposable camera camera so why does he like nina so much later that night right nina is going through the photos that seymour gave her and all of a sudden her husband grabs one of the photos and it's seymour selfie right so he's like what is that throws it off to the side but what's crazy is later that night seymour also is looking through the same photos at this restaurant and what he did was he made a copy of all the photos for himself of Nina's family and the waitress comes up to him like oh my gosh is that your family and Seymour says yes this is my family you want to see them what the heck so when Seymour gets home you can see on his dresser right he has a bunch of photos of Nina and her family like just sitting on in frames and when Seymour is sitting and watching TV you can see behind him he has like this huge wall filled with photos of Nina and her family this is getting really creepy yeah so the next day Seymour goes to work right and he just it's like a regular day his regular customers come in he's helping them and he's developing photos everything's going like normal but while this is all going on Nina's at home with her family and Nina's getting an argument with her husband William she's basically telling him you're a horrible husband you're a horrible father and you could tell that they're not getting along so obviously nina's in a bad relationship does seymour like want to get with her or something just wait so seymour on his lunch break right he has a photo of nina and her family like, during christmas time and he's looking at it and he's like and he starts to imagine himself in the photo too with them and later that day william nina's husband comes into the store and seymour sees him and he's like oh my gosh it's him so seymour walks up to william and it's like hey can i help you and william's like oh yeah and then seymour tells him like you have such a beautiful family you have such a beautiful home. Like all of a sudden, William's like, whoa, what the heck? How do you know so much about my family? But then he thinks nothing of it. And he's like, okay, thanks for the compliment. Like, and just moves on. What the heck does Seymour want? So later that day, Seymour goes to Nina's house and breaks in. And then he walks into the kitchen and he finds a photo of himself on their fridge. So he decides to go sit on the couch and like relax and watch their TV. But all of a sudden he hears somebody walk through the front door and it's Nina and her family. And they see him sitting there and they're like, oh, it's no big deal, right? Hi, Seymour, how are you doing? Wait, what? It turns out that Seymour was just dreaming, okay? And he's actually sitting in his car outside their house, just watching their house, like imagining if he was inside. And then he drives to Nina's son, Jake's soccer practice and like watches his practice. And he, like he sits in the stands. And then when it's over, he goes up to Jake and like walks him home. And Jake tells Seymour like, oh, thanks for like being here. My dad never comes to any of my soccer practices. So like Seymour brings him a toy like that he's always wanted and gives it to Jake. And then after that, Seymour gets in his car, drives to the mall and finds Nina sitting at the food court and goes up to her. So he knows the whole family schedule. Yeah. So the next day, Seymour goes to work and his boss goes up to Seymour and notices that Seymour has been using like the company's supplies and like he's been printing extra photos for himself. So the boss said like, this isn't a charity. Like we're going to fire you today. We're tired of this. Well, it looks like he just pissed off a psycho. Yeah. So Seymour's furious. He just says, screw it. I'm tired of this. So then he goes back to work the next morning and he looks through all the files and there's one customer that he pulls out. Her name's Maya. And he's like looking through her photos. But when he's looking through it, he realizes that he sees William. Nina's husband kissing Maya in one of the photos. So he finds out that William's cheating on Nina. So he takes those photos of him cheating and puts it in Nina's file. So when Nina comes to pick him up, she's going to see him. Okay, this guy's a savage. Yeah, so as Seymour's leaving the store, he opens up the glass case and takes out a knife. And he starts driving around, following Nina around, taking photos of her 
and trying to spy on her. And all of a sudden, Nina stops her car and starts looking at the photos and she sees the picture of Maya kissing her husband, William, and she just starts crying. So Seymour follows Nina home, hoping that he's gonna be able to see Nina call out her husband, William, for cheating. So he's watching them, right? And Nina's saying nothing to her husband. And this makes Seymour so mad. Why would you say nothing? So Seymour leaves. He goes back home. He starts looking at his wall of all the photos he's taken, right? And he's like just admiring all the photos. And the next day, Seymour goes back to work. He walks into his store. The manager comes up to him and says, hey, Seymour, you have to leave. You're not supposed to be here. And he tells the manager like, no, I can be here. I'm just a customer. You can't make me leave. So Seymour drops off one of his cameras and the one hour photo starts trying to develop the photos. But what they realize is that he actually was taking pictures of his manager's daughter. So the manager opens up the envelope, sees the pictures of his daughter and freaks out and calls the police. And the police start investigating Seymour. Okay, this is too weird. I'm never getting photos developed. Yeah, so Seymour leaves the building. He starts to go spy on like Maya and William because he wants to see what they're doing. But during this time, the police go to Seymour's house and they see the photo wall of all the photos of Nina's family. But the police notice on every single photo that had William on it, he scratches off William's face. It's really not looking good for William. So Seymour goes to the hotel that William and Maya are staying at, right? And he breaks down their door and he says like, he forces them to be like, intimate with each other so that he could get the evidence on camera and after Seymour gets the photos he runs out of the building and the police arrest him but what's crazy is that Seymour actually didn't take pictures of them he actually just took pictures of furniture around them what's the point of that I don't really know all I know is that Seymour reveals that he had a really bad childhood and his dad used to abuse him but the movie ends with a photo of Nina William and Jake and Seymour together in a photo and that's how the movie ends wait so does Seymour get arrested or is he with the family I think this is the whole like imagination thing right we don't know does he get arrested or does he like live a happily ever after life with his family? Like, I don't know. Is it that time we're going to bring back dumb ways to die? It's that time. <laughs> I thought you were joking about doing it again, but um, hey, you know, Daniel's bringing back dumb ways to die. So welcome back to dumb ways to die where I talk about the craziest and dumbest ways people have died. You're about to lose some brain cells and you may question why just that happened. Why? Just why? <laughs> so there was just like a couple couple of teenagers two teenagers they were best friends right they just decided to go out and have some fun yeah okay they kind of lived in like a desert area so they actually came across a snake okay a little rattlesnake so what they decided to do was hey let's play catch with the rattlesnake so they decided to play catch with a the rattlesnake they're throwing a snake back and forth to each other nice one of them gets bit not nice sorry not nice. yeah <laughs> yeah go ahead go ahead so one of them gets bit yeah and with the other one trying to help his friend that just got bit he gets bit okay, okay? now they start to go unconscious because of the venom yeah the paramedics come one of the friends lived one of the friends didn't was it the one that got bit first or the second one the first one he died oh okay but ah that's sad you don't you don't play catch with a snake no what the heck's going on man okay so moving on to the next one do you know what an atomic wedgie is like where they put like it's like a wedgie but they put it over their head okay yeah right i they know pull, it's called they pull atomic the over their head okay so this son and his dad were like messing around right but the the son was like like he's like in his 20s okay okay and the, and the the son was like dude i'm gonna mess with my dad and just give him an atomic wedgie okay okay so he goes up behind him and he just rips it up right and he puts it over his head yeah but the underwear rips and the elastic part goes over his neck okay right and the son couldn't get the elastic part off his dad's <laughs> neck and he suffocated no what yeah that's crazy i, I could envision it too like right it coming down, no matter what you do you just can't move right i don't know why he didn't get scissors and just cut it or just freaking rip it <laughs> rip that man <laughs> just go down there if you have to and just rip it <laughs> Okay, so this one, I don't know what the logic behind this next one is, but I'm just like, what the heck is this? Okay, so this guy wanted to test how good his hearing is. Okay. And he was perfectly normal. Like, he didn't have any, like, hearing issues or anything. He could hear perfectly fine. Yeah. So he thought the best way to test this was to go to the train tracks, okay? Face the opposite direction the train was coming. Okay. And he would put his ear on the railing. Hoping he can hear the train. Like from like the vibration of the yeah. tracks. Yeah. He didn't hear it. Okay. <whistles> Squashed. How do you not hear it? I don't know. Dude, that thing shakes the ground from like a mile away. That's what I thought, but he didn't hear it. So maybe he did have hearing problems. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. He the... wants to find out if he could hear or not. So he's like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find out today if I can hear. Yeah. He doesn't have like someone just like talk to him. He just goes to the train track. Oh my gosh, bro. What the heck? So he just laid there on the train track like. Hoping he could hear it. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching this week's podcast. If you're new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Get those fireworks going. Let's all have fireworks in our life. Let's just freaking send it. I'm serious. Like, why not? I, I, I'm not against you. Make sure you also comment what you want us to talk about next week. As you guys saw, we took your guys' suggestions, and we talked a lot 
This was a long episode. All right, we'll see you guys next week, Friday, on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. And we'll see you guys tomorrow on TikTok. See you on the TikTok. God bless you guys. See ya. Love ya.